Uh, well, clearly the North Carolina game wasn't what we'd hoped for, or uh, we would certainly expect and like to play better than we did in that game, especially defensively. And uh, we put that behind us to try to learn from it, move on, and get ready to play a really good Virginia Tech team on the road Saturday. I think Blacksburg is one of the tougher places to play in our league. Uh, they're always really physical on defense and uh, have a lot of good athletes. Their quarterback's playing at a very high level. they got a good running back, good receivers, and uh, be a stiff challenge for us up there on the road. Hey, questions for Coach Johnson. You're, you're facing a, a uh, team, like you said, is real tough on defense. This will be a good test for your offensive line just because they, they – you know, pile up a lot of sacks so far this season. Yeah, no, they're really athletic on defense. Uh, kid number 60 is all over the place when you turn the tape on. Uh, he's, you know, a heck of a player. And uh, he's been playing for about, you know, three years now, and I think he's playing his best football by far. But uh, the the other kid, number seven, the Ellickman kid, uh, has been playing the defensive end. He's played a lot. So they're, they're very talented on – defense. They've got a couple of probably NFL prospects at linebacker, and then they're usually pretty good in the secondary. <clears throat> Sorry, I know you addressed this yesterday, but can you address, uh, can you update uh, Freddie Burden and Justin? You don't have any new, nothing new on those guys. I don't have anything new on those guys. Guys, we have a conference rule <clears throat> that we're not supposed to talk about injuries. I mean, that was voted on by the coaches, and I'm not trying to be a, a smart act, but, you know, you're going to get the report on Thursday, and I know it makes it hard for you to do your deal, but it's a conference policy. <clears throat> Other than the results, um, what, is it that, what is it that Virginia Tech's defense does that makes it effective that maybe you would like to see your defense do? <laughs> <laughs> the... Uh, well, I just think they're they're really physical. Uh, they run to the ball. They create a lot of negative plays. Uh, historically, they've created a lot of turnovers, a lot of sacks, a lot of you know minus yardage plays. And when you do that, uh, they create a lot of uh, field position and a lot of opportunities for their offense. Well, yeah, they're very aggressive and they got good players. You know, I think Bud does a really good job. He's been doing it for a long time. Uh, you know, they they are who they are. I mean, that's they've got an identity and that's the way they play. I guess in terms of your defensive identity, you guys haven't had much of one over the last few years. Is, uh, is that something that bothers you, like in something you try to change? Or kind of how do you approach as a head coach? Well, sure. I mean, you want to be good on in all facets of the football team. I mean, that's for sure. I think that, uh, you know, in 14, we created a lot of turnovers, which was a positive. That was kind of the identity of the 14 team on defense. <clears throat> Last year we were not as good in that category, but we, you know, we we probably didn't give as many points as we have this year. So it's uh, every team is different. Uh, you know, our if you go all the way back, I mean, I'm, it's this is the ninth season. It's hard to think about all of them, but you know, our our 08 defense was pretty good. Uh, I think we were probably. I don't remember the, the year, but either 10, 11, or 12, we were. I mean, you know, it's it's been hit and miss. Um, I mean, if there was one thing that could help the defense right now that they could do, what what would it be? What's, like, number one? We get off the field on third down. third down. Yeah. I mean, that creates most all the problems. Not all of them, but. 
it would solve a lot if you could get off the field on third down. The issue is we're not making any plays, and, and what we're doing is not working, so we've got to try to look to do something else on third downs. Uh. <clears throat> I mean, not to keep harping on this, but it seems like defensively the guys are kind of waiting for some big play, like, and they're not covering their guys at times, and that's where you talk about eye discipline and that kind of thing. Guys take their eyes off for a second, and then a guy – slides open in the middle of the field. That seems to be a, a huge issue on third down in particular. If the play takes more than they anticipate, like, you know, a few seconds, and it kind of all goes great high wire for them. Well, I think there's a lot of variables involved in that. But the, uh, you know, the bottom line is you just you got to make some plays on third down. You, you got to, you know, if they're throwing the ball, you got to get some pressure or you got to cover guys. You got to knock a ball down. You got to. You know, you just gotta gotta do something. Got to make plays. <clears throat> Is it um, interesting, or I guess funny to you that people will say, "Oh, because you've been here a while, people have figured out your offense," but you don't really hear that about Bud Foster's defense, and he's been in Blacksburg, you know, twice as long as you've been here. I don't pay much attention to what people say unless I think they know what they're talking about. Uh, the, you know, there is no, that's the biggest misnomer in all of football that people, if that were the case, then nobody would be running a pro style offense. They've been running them for a hundred years or four, three defense or three, four defense or, or whatever. I, I think that each team or each whatever has their own uniqueness about them. And the bottom line is it comes down to execution, how you execute what you're doing and, and who you're doing it with, you, you know, and uh, that's not going to change through time. I mean, it, you know, you, you see teams now that it comes in and out. It's like all the gun offenses. I mean, there's so much single wing stuff, and that that you know that was 40 years ago. Half of the offense, the gun stuff's based on single wing stuff. So, uh, it, you know, the option was out of vogue, then it came back in vogue, and. I mean, there's hardly a college football team now that doesn't run some form of an option. You can call it zone read or whatever, but it's even crept into the NFL, you know, because it's hard to defend. <clears throat> Coach, when you talk about keeping the eyes in the right place with Evans, that's going to be critical because he's not only is he a, a, an efficient passer, but he's, he's also, you know, takes right. off and runs the ball a lot. Yeah, well, and I hope our guys ain't watching him. They need to be eyes on – your keys, if you've got a guy man-to-man, -man, you, you you need to have your eyes on that guy and not be looking to try to guess plays or or whatever. And if, if he's your responsibility, then, then yeah, you're going to have to contain him. But he's a good runner, and uh, he's been, you know, you know, pretty accurate throwing the ball, too. He's got a lot of touchdowns and very few interceptions. We've asked a lot about – you know, sending more than four, and it, it seems almost invariable that if you send four, it, it, it doesn't affect the quarterback. Is it, would you want to see more than four consistently? I mean, I, I think there's a point which you become, if you blitz so often, then you become predictable that way, but is well, that was, what you would want? There was plenty of times in the Carolina game that we sent five. There was times we sent six. Uh, you know, you also got to give the other team credit sometimes. Uh, if they're pretty good and you send six, they get they get it out fast. There, this comes back to like what you're talking about. You got to cover a little better. Uh, you just got to tie it all together. You got to know that when you got six or seven blitzing, that it's going to come out faster. You, you, you know, hopefully. And if you've only got four rushing, it's not going to come out as fast most of the time. So uh, we've got as good a pressure, really, defensively. If you break it down and you look at it, we get as good a pressure when we send three as when we send four or five, you know. Uh, just seems to be that's kind of the way it's been. I'm curious, do, do you think players, and I, I, both sides of the defense, 
after a game like that, that, that just kind of embarrassment and, and knowing that I, we, we can't play that badly spurs something in them to, to, to play a little better going forward? I think here's what has to happen no matter what sports you play or what you're doing or, or anything else. When a game like that happens and you play that poorly, you have to be able to look at the tape and you have to say, I know why this happened. And it was because I either my eyes were in the wrong place or, it, you know, where you run into problems is if a guy comes out of it and he doesn't know why it happened. You know, if he's thinking, man, I'm doing what they're asking me to do and this ain't working, then that's where you run into problems. I think as long as kids or people or players or whatever can look at the tape and see what should be happening and within a uh, modicum or whatever word I'm looking for think, you know, I could do that. I just didn't. If I'm supposed to have my – Eyes, if I'm supposed to be a three technique on the guard and I'm getting reached by the center, then I'm not looking at the guard. You, you know what I'm saying? My eyes are in the backfield or whatever. That doesn't have anything to do with physical ability always. It has to do with leverage and and we got to coach them. If we're not getting it done, we got to coach them better to, to do it, you know. What, with our kids? No, I, I think you talk to them as much as I do. I don't think you're going to hear one of those kids on defense say, man, I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm doing what they're asking me to do, and it just don't seem to work. You, you know, because when you can look at the tape, it, it's like I've always said, I, I go back, you know, most of my background has been offensively for the last 30 years, but I, I coach defense too. But that's why I like our offense so much. It's pretty simple. You turn the tape on, they can see why it didn't work. There, there ain't any debate. You know, if I've got the linebacker and the linebacker's making the tackle, there's not any debate. I know what happened. Now, if I'm the offensive tackle and, and you're telling me to go block the linebacker and a guy's, you know, holding me or squeezing me and I can't get off the line, and then I'm going to be frustrated and I'm going to come in on Monday and when I watch the tape, I'm going to go, Man, you're asking me to do something that's impossible. I can't get that guy with this guy holding me or whatever. That's when the frustration comes in. Not when, you know, if, if I'm supposed to cover you and you beat me and get open, if I got you, then I got to look within. I got to say, okay, do I got to come up and press or try to knock you off your route or if I got to lay back or if you're running by me and maybe I got to back up or, or whatever. But the problem would be if somebody's running out in the flat and catching the ball and you don't know who's got them. And when you get in there on film on Monday and the coach can't tell you what happened. Coach, who's got him? Mm, good question. I don't know. <laughs> then then you got problems. You, you know, that doesn't – you know, I, I watched the tape – repeatedly over and over and I watch it with the defensive coaches and I and I watch it and I understand what's happening. Now, is everybody is somebody gonna make the perfect call every time? No. Just like I don't make the perfect call on offense every time. But as long as it's sound and you have a chance to execute it, that's all you can ask for. That you know, they got coaches that get paid too. They're trying to make the perfect call on their side. <clears throat> so if I'm the offensive guy and I'm thinking you're sending seven, I'm not going to stand back there and hold the ball. I'm going to get it out quick and throw three-step or I'm going to check or whatever. So, and some of that comes into play too. But <clears throat> I don't think that we have those problems.